Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to Legends of Chess, another online tournament organized by Chess24.com platform as a part of Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour. And this is the rapid time control tournament. So 15 minutes plus 10 seconds incrementation. Um, and uh, there are 10 players who are gonna uh, first compete in the round robin. So everybody plays with everybody. Uh, and uh, each match includes four uh, rapid games games and the winner gets three points. If it's a draw, uh, we have uh, two points each, then we have Armageddon and the winner get two points and the loser one point. So uh, that's the rule and let me introduce you the players. So of course we have Magnus Carlsen and uh, then Vishwanathan Anand who is of course the legend for over three decades. We have Peter Sfiedler. We have Vasily Ivanchuk, Ding Liren, Jan Nepomniashi, Boris Gelfand. We haven't seen Boris Gelfand, I think, uh, for a quite uh, some time. Peter Leko, also legendary, uh, not only commentator, great theoretician, and also one of the strongest players in the world still. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik, um, he was the world champion, of course, and legendary uh, Twitter poster Anish Giri, who was also invited by Magnus Carlsen. Um, so these are the players and uh, today I would like to show you one of the games, decisive games in the match between uh, Vichy Anand who is number 17 in the world in the rapid time control, he's ranking 2751, uh, he's 50 years old and as I said he was the, the world champion but also he's the legend for, for over three decades. Uh, so, you know, still in the great shape, uh, mentally and physically, uh, very, very strong player. And Peter Sfiedler, uh, who's gonna play as white. He's number 20 in the world, he's ranking 2742, and he's much younger, only 44 years old. Uh, and Peter Sfiedler uh, also got a very nice achievement, eight times a Russian championship. That's a pretty impressive achievement, and you know, uh, Russia, especially on his time uh, that, that was a very strong you know um, competition at that time so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Peter Fiddler opened with knight on f3 we have d5 ready opening g3 and c5 so Sicilian variation uh, and now bishop on g2 knight on f6 we have castle and now g6 so Vichy Anand goes for the fianchetto as well we have d4 creating some imbalances in the in the pawn structure c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 bishop on g7 and now knight on b3 just to avoid any e5 move with tempo uh, we have knight on c6 uh, and now knight on c3 uh, and here e6 so uh, quite slow and here e4 moves is a well-known move a4 idea also bishop on f4 this was everything played however we have bishop on e3 uh, and it looks like uh, you know pretty illogical move um, because if we have you know in the in the mind the principles what to do with this bishop but the idea is is bringing this bishop to this diagonal uh, so for now black actually doesn't have much choice and first have to castle otherwise that's gonna be a problematic in the future so uh, we have castle by Vichy Anand and now bishop on c5 anyway rook on e8 is forced and now the continuation of the of the plan knight on b5 so we already see that this knight gonna jump to d6 and gonna be uh, very annoying so definitely very well prepared uh, by Peter Fiedler. I haven't seen this variation and it wasn't played also um, in the past at least not on the top level so uh, it's a pretty interesting plan and here Vichy plays very precise b6 first with tempo uh, making the, the way for the bishop. We have bishop on a3 and now bishop on a6 uh, asking Peter, okay, what are you gonna do with this knight? Uh, I think you wanted to, to jump on d6. Are you gonna do it now? Uh, actually, it's possible Peter could go for, for knight on d6 immediately. However, after rook on e7, and let's say c4 because this knight is trapped over there okay uh, after this move this knight would be trapped so c4 is necessary and after a rook on d4 not knight on b5 that would be actually disaster because uh, not only attacking this knight not only attacking this knight but also attacking this queen that would be a pretty good bad decision uh, but rather c takes on d5 
And now after knight on d5, bishop on d5, c takes on d5 and uh, queen on d5, uh, the knight is under attack, the knight is un unprotected, so hanging piece, uh, knight on e5, and it looks like this knight gonna have the, the problems, however after queen on e4, uh, it's not really a problem, because the knight cannot be taken, because the rook on a8 is hanging, okay, so... Um, White can of course bring the bring the rooks to the center uh, and then move the the knight and continue the game. However, it's a it's a it's a bit shaky. So Peter Spiller first prepares that and he plays c4. Now he prepares that move. Uh, we have knight on e5, also prepared by um, by Vichy Anand. He don't want to have the hanging piece uh, on c6. And now knight on d6, uh, attacking the rook. So, of course, Vichy can go for this variation, which I show you, uh, with rook on e7. Uh, and after c takes on d5, and knight on d5, knight on d4, uh, and after rook on d7, it looks like this knight is in troubles. However, queen on a4 uh, solve all the problems, because this bishop is also hanging. So, uh, for example, bishop on b7, and after exchanging let's say rook f on d1 and everything is fine with this position however uh, Vichy Anand goes for the imbalances and he plays knight on c4 sacrificing the rook uh, Peter Spiedler doesn't have much choice so uh, he accepts that we have knight on e8 knight on e8 uh, rook on c1 and now as you see um, this pawn is under attack so knight on b2 with the attack on the on the queen so bishop on b2 bishop on b2 uh, and now rook on c2 and bishop on b7 so what just happened vichy anand sacrificed the exchange but he also gets two pawns and these are quite uh, strong pawns because first he can create the passed pawn uh, and also he has very strong pawn structure so it's a very very solid position what white got uh, white can control the the c so that's the only counterplay but the game is pretty complicated so queen on c1 uh, and now we have knight on d6 so developing this knight uh, we have rook on d1 uh, and now bishop goes back to b7 uh, we have queen on f4 very active move uh, targeting f7 so the plan is to double the rooks um, bring the rook to, to c7 and maybe put some pressure over there however for now uh, this knight you know uh, defending f7 uh, we have a5 so Vichy goes for the attack on the queen side and now knight on d2 we have b5 rook d on c1 so double the rooks on the c file and before continuing the the pawn rush and now uh, white stands slightly worse in this position you know these pawns are very very dangerous uh, but what to play uh, the engine suggests knight on b3 with the idea of of knight on um, on c5 and if black uh, you know play something like b3 uh, a takes on b3 and and then this this knight actually controls b3 so uh, it would be much easier to play for white uh, actually white stands now much better because black doesn't have any counterplay on the queen side uh, the problem is black actually can play something like bishop on c3 locking this this rook so this rook uh, not gonna do anything in the game and now the attack on the on the queen side is a uh, very dangerous so uh, probably uh, white would be forced to to give back the exchange uh, and play with the you know being down the pawn so uh, still black could be much better so uh, peter Spiedler tries something else he plays rook on c5 uh, but now we have e5 attacking the queen and this queen you know doesn't have a really great life and it's very difficult to find now the square for the queen so we have queen on e3, knight on f5, still harassing the queen, uh, and now queen on b3. And here actually uh, Vichy Anand had the chance to, to probably even win the game. Look at this move. Knight on d4 is extremely strong, attacking the queen and also attacking e2. Uh, so uh, it would be another pawn and getting back the exchange with three extra pawns. That's, uh, that's the, of course, easy win for, for Vichy Anand. So queen on d1 would be forced and then bishop on f8. And now where to move the rook? 
The, the only way is Rook on C7, otherwise uh, White has to give back the, the exchange and being, uh, you know, down two pawns. Uh, but now Bishop on A6. Uh, and what to play now? Look at this. Now the knight can jump to e2 uh, and the fork the, the king and the and the rook. So probably bishop on f1 is the only move. Uh, but now bishop on d6 attacking this rook. And this time rook has nowhere to go uh, and have to play something like a3. Just exchange the bishops. Um, and after taking the rook, of course, take the this rook, uh, queen on f1, uh, and let's say a4 and continue the attack. So uh, black has extra two pawns in the winning position. So this was possible. However, uh, Vichy Anand missed that opportunity and he played e4. Uh, e4, just to make this bishop very sad now, uh, it has, you know, nowhere to go. And it's watching at this center and, uh, and you know, it's, it's quite unuseful for now. Uh, we have e3, so controlling d4. Uh, so as you see, Peter Spiedler immediately uh, figure out that he um, screw up and then uh, that, that would be very, very dangerous. However, we still have initiative of black, bishop on f8, rook on c7, uh, and now a4 attacking the, the queen, so queen on c2. And now uh, knight on d6, defending the bishop, but also with the idea of bringing the bishop to c3, just to the to, to cut the, the c file uh, and you know uh, remove the communication between the rooks and the and the queen. Uh, we have bishop on h3 now threatening the the rook on d7, uh, and here is the critical moment of the game where Vichy is still stands better. He could try something like b3. Maybe it's not the best idea, but after a takes on b3, he don't need to take it. He actually could play a3 and try to play uh, maybe with this pawn. But it's unclear how to you know uh, make advantage. Maybe you know White definitely have to pay attention here and maybe black could do something on the uh, in the center get the another kind of advantage uh Another idea much stronger could be queen on b8. Queen on b8 uh, with the idea of bishop on a6. So for example after rook on d7 making uh, some space for the queen play bishop on a6 and now if queen on c6 then we have bishop on b5 uh, pretty unfortunately however uh, okay white can take the pawn uh, and after bishop on d7 bishop on d7 black play with one extra pawn uh, so definitely black stands much better uh, also, if queen on c7, it's still good for, for black after exchanging. Uh, knight on b5 can be played. Uh, so the rook is under attack. Rook has to retreat. And after, let's say, d4, knight on e4, the knight can jump to c3, attack the knight. So uh, white are forced to, to do something about that. Uh, and it's pretty dangerous here. And uh, these rooks, double the rooks on the, on the c file, but they are completely unuseful. Uh, and black still stands <coughs> much better. So this was possible. A queen on b8 looks really, really um, great. However, uh, Anand played bishop on a6 first, uh, and it's not as strong uh, as it was because now we have queen on c6 uh, and bishop on b5 does nothing because um, just you know white gonna win the pawn on d5 and everything is fine with the position. However, uh, Anand had this idea because he wanted to remaneuver the knight um, to c. So we have knight on b5, we have rook on d7 as planned, queen on e8, and now queen on d5. So look at this, white already gets some initiative uh, attacking f7 and black has to keep the, the queen uh, to control f7. And there is one very serious threat, rook on f7 followed by the bishop on e6. You see that already? So if the queen takes, that's uh, that's a... Uh, very unpleasant for black. Uh, however, black has the move now. So knight on c3 with the attack on the queen. So queen have to be moved. Uh, however, it's not possible because if queen moves, that actually this queen gonna be harassed. Uh, for example, h6, queen on f6, bishop on g7, queen on c6. Now this bishop, you know, um, harass the queen. Uh, and, and this is just unplayable. So uh, the only move Peter Fiddler could play in this position is actually rook on c3. 
give back the, the exchange. We have B takes on C3 and now look at this. The knight is under attack uh, and if the, the knight is moved, this pawn can actually march and it's not easy to stop it. So uh, feel free to pause the video and find the only continuation for white uh, to draw that game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only move, really, the only move here is rook on f7. I show you that already and this is the, the only move. Now, uh, there are gonna be some nasty discovery. So the only way for black uh, is queen on f7 to not lose the game. Both sides have to be very, very precise. Queen on f7 and after bishop on e6, c2. So black gonna promote and it's not much can be done here. So bishop on f7, uh, king on g7, and there is no way to stop this, this, this pawn. If, for example, queen on c6, then rook on c8, and this pawn gonna promote anyway. So probably king on g2, just to avoid this check. The game can continue and the position is completely equal. Uh, black has one pawn less, however, pair of bishop, uh, so everything is fine. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's the only way to draw that position. However, Peter Fiedler tries to be as active as possible and he play knight on e4 and this is actually losing move the idea of course is jumping to f6 the problem is if Vichy Anand plays c2 it's losing because after let's say rook on c7 stopping that uh, we can have rook on d8 uh, and after knight on f6 uh, checking attacking the queen defending this uh, this queen uh, king on h8 this is the only way king on g7 is losing because uh, this will come with the check so king on h8 and here after knight on e8 rook on d5 and yes white can take the pawn the problem is this is the problem bishop on f1 so black gonna win the piece uh, and win the game it's okay Be being up the, the the piece that is of course winning and also if white tries something uh, like bishop on d7 complicate the, the the things very simple queen on e7 with the attack on the on the knight uh, also this bishop is pinned uh, this way and this way uh, and white doesn't have any chances to actually uh, continue the game if queen on d4 let's say then bishop on g7 winning this this knight and the game and if let's say queen on c6 uh, deflecting the queen queen has to move and winning the 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 piece this way so uh this is possible for uh, Vichy Anand to win the game, c2. However, after this blunder, believe me or not, Vichy Anand counter blunder and play bishop on e7. The idea is not to only control f6, because this, this he could go for, you know, bishop on g7, uh, but the also block this move. Rook on f7, very dangerous move with the idea of bishop on e6 and winning the queen. So uh, this is the idea. However, feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Not really complicated, so uh, that's really a blunder. Uh, Rook on e7 and in this position Vichy Anand just resigned and he resigned because his rook is hanging so uh, that's of course uh, losing with the check and white gonna have one extra <coughs> piece and the game is, is just lost uh, and if c2 just trying this way it's just too slow simply knight on f6 of course the, the king cannot go to g7 because of, the, of taking the queen with tempo so um, king on h8 and after rook on e8 again with tempo rook on e8 queen can come to d2 uh, and win this pawn and it cannot be defended because um, the bishop controls c8, so that's not possible. Uh, also, queen on f8, it also doesn't work because now rook on f7 uh, and after queen on f7, bishop on e6 can be played, but also queen on a8 with check, king g7, queen a6 
and again uh, white gonna play with one extra piece so it's it's completely winning so this is why in this position Vichy Anand just resigned the game very dramatic game beautiful um, opening preparation by Peter Spiedler very interesting idea of, of bringing the, the knight to d6 then Vichy Anand sacrificed the, the, the exchange uh, and got his beautiful passed pawn however in the critical moment he didn't find the, the winning continuation once uh, and then he couldn't find also uh, the winning continuation after Peter's Fidel blunder it was completely insane it was very very complicated both players uh, were in the time troubles so uh, that's what happening uh, sometimes in the very often actually in the rapid time control uh, so Peter Fidler got the the winning point and this was the last game uh, first three games were drawn so Peter Fidler uh, gonna get three points and I will show you one more game and then I will show you also uh, the standings after day one so uh, feel free to subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one